I'm excited about our next guest because I think there are some moms out there who are probably hurting and they could use uh, Cheryl's story, first of all. They could, they, it would, they'll benefit from hearing about Cheryl Meekin's story. It's Channel Mom with Jenny Dean Schmidt. We're here for you. I'm Tom Walker with American Family Insurance. If you have questions about insurance or other services we provide, I want to help. You're always welcome to contact me or simply stop by my office so we can get to know each other. Thanks for visiting and have a great day. Call Tom at Tom Walker Agency, your American Star certified agency. Excellence in customer experience at TomWalkerInsurance.com. Now, we are on Christian radio, and, and I happen to be a, a Christian, a sold-out believer, but I also try to uh, love on moms who aren't there and just say, I'm, I'm called by God to love you no matter where you're at with your faith. And so uh, Cheryl will tell her story probably from a Christian perspective today, but, but I know she too will have in mind though, those women that aren't there yet. So we want to be sensitive to that. Um, so without further ado, I want to welcome Cheryl Meekins to the Channel Mom Show, blogger who uh, has something entitled Wounded Healer Warrior, and she's a speaker as well, and uh, we're just so blessed to have her. Welcome to the Channel Mom Show, Cheryl. Thanks, Jenny. I'm so happy to be here. I want you to be able to launch right into your story, Cheryl. Can you just share with folks, and I know you kind of got to be G-rated about it, but yeah. the abusive childhood you went through and, and how it led to you to, to who you are and what you do today? Yes, I would love to. And I also want to say that this, this part, this story, and kind of what we're sharing today is also for those that grew up in the church and maybe had this in their background and now can no longer feel the freedom to be active in their faith or even know how to talk to God anymore because um, childhood abuse is a direct, um, directly affects how you relate to God yeah. um, because mom and dad are supposed to be those initial um, uh, people who teach you through their actions uh, what this unconditional love of God looks like, what it feels like, um, if it's predictable if it's dependable, and all of those kind of get jumbled up when you grow up in this. And so that was kind of my experience. I, um, we were a great Christian family going to church together, and I had the age and era of patent leather shoes and pretty frilly dresses and mm -hmm. um, got to go, and I learned about Jesus, and I was really good at sword drills, looking up the scriptures. And my mom, probably the best gift she's ever given me, um, started me memorizing scripture at the age of three. Wow. And, um, and I can tell you, and I've told her, that, Mom, you have no idea how that has saved me and walked me into healing is that part. And so it is really hard for us as Christians to even begin conceptualizing that that can exist in the same space. The as abuse, abuse and the faith yeah absolutely and, and by the way know, i, I want to just say a shout out to good moms because yes. god bless her for at least giving you that yes well and she gave me other gifts too and it's that's something that sometimes as you grow up there's a certain amount of denial that you live in as you've accepted this as this is family this is normal probably everybody goes through this and um so I did that. I mean, it was 18 before I could say, wow, we have a really highly dysfunctional family. <laughs> yeah. And can you and, just tell, without, without offending anybody, can you tell people kind of generically how you were abused? Sure. There's, and this has been a process of discovery as well, because part of coming out of the denial is actually calling it what it is. And um, so um, there was physical abuse present, um, and it was not... Um, consistent on like a daily basis or even a weekly basis and that kind of made it hard for me to identify and call it um, physical abuse. There was also um, some other pieces. There was definitely emotional or psychological abuse. Those terms are used um, similarly and that kind of looks like um, more like emotional manipulation and control pieces. Yeah. And then um, I, I have learned since learned, like in the last couple of years, that there are aspects of negligence. And most of the time when we think neg negligence, we're assuming that somebody doesn't feed you or doesn't care for you. And um, that in my case, it wasn't about the basic needs of negligence. It was more about um, that when action could have been taken to uh, protect me, it was not. And that is 
considered negligence. Huh. So, so um, you felt unsafe. I felt unsafe emotionally, psychologically, and um, often physically. And so those are all aspects of it. I mean, there's, there's still more things that are abuse that I didn't experience. There's um, sometimes financial abuse, which is typically between domestic violence. And um, to, to some extent, I think my mom felt that way, that she had no option mm-hmm. to do um, something about it. And um, plus, it's just a whole different era. Things that we have available now were not even on the plate in, um, when I was growing up. You know, she didn't have the same resources. That- Let me interject quickly. When you say you were physically abused, I want people to get just a little bit of a picture. It, it wasn't that somebody spanked you now and again, because I actually happen to believe in spanking, but it was that you were literally hurt. You were literally, somebody, yes, somebody was hard on you physically in a, in a way that is not at all appropriate. Right. And, and I think that sometimes we do have to be ultra careful in spanking. And I, that was honestly one of my struggles in parenting Yeah. Um, as I became an adult. And to be honest, I'm even still moving through that, like, how do I really feel about that? And what is that really? And yeah. um, how do I discern that? And I had to take... Um, deliberate steps for myself to make sure I never ever spanked in anger. Yeah, I, and I get um, that, and, and I, so let's rest so. on that for a second, because I because I don't want to <laughs> have people think I'm sort of a promoter of violence against your yes. children. Yeah. Um. And and I I'll, I'll tell you what I I didn't want to spank at first, and so I avoided it for several years. Um. And then I I, I came to it biblically and some other ways that yeah I got to spank I I think I should spank because I happen to have two strong willed children mm-hmm. who frankly almost seemed the opposite of traumatized by it. My daughter would actually laugh at me but but um, when I spanked her. But mm-hmm. but I totally agree with you. We have to be cautious about it. I did try to go through the training and say, never do this in anger. Always have a forgiveness session afterwards mm-hmm. where yeah. they can hug you, they can heal. Yeah. Um, always make sure, I, I didn't do it with my hand, so they yeah. were never afraid of my hand. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, and I really worked very hard to never do it in anger at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I did, but I did have a child, my second in particular, who would look at me and stick her hands in a socket and oh, no. she'd pull out the thing and go straight for the socket. And I thought, all right, I think maybe a little swat on the bottom is going to save your yeah. life. Yeah. And if that's the only thing you'll listen to and, and, and having grown up and having been spanked myself, mm-hmm. that is the least of my childhood trauma. Mm-hmm. So, I, so that is how I worked it all out for myself. I just want to yeah. get that out there for people. Well, and one other step that I did for myself because, um, my anger flares very quickly and, um, and that's actually anger is a surface emotion, just so everybody knows that the real question should then be, why am I angry? What part of me has felt violated that I need to use anger as a defense? Yeah.